Hello everyone, this is Ashish Sunny from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an exciting project to showcase. A 7 segment and touch sensor based counter with ESP32 and ESP IDF. In this video, we'll walk you through the step by step process of creating a simple yet captivating counter application that will count your interactions with a touch sensor and display the results on the 7 segment display. So let's dive right in. First, let's take a quick look at what we will cover in this video. We will start by introducing the components we will be using in this project. The ESP32 microcontroller, a 7 segment display and a touch sensor. Then we will explain the concept behind our project and how it all comes together. Meet our star component the ESP32 microcontroller known for its versatility and performance will be the brain of a project. Next, we have the 7 segment display, a classic choice for numerical output due to its simplicity and visibility. And last but not the least, the touch sensor which will enable us to interact with the counter effortlessly. Before we get our hands dirty with coding, let's grasp the concept of a project, when the touch sensor is pressed, the ESP32 will detect the input and increment the counter value by 1. The updated count will then be displayed on the 7 segment display. It's that simple and intuitive. To kickstart a project, we'll need to set up the development environment. And to set up the development environment, we need to install uh, ESP IDF and we have to set up the environment on that. And that part we have already covered up in a previous video. If you haven't watched that, do watch that so that you won't face any difficulties in working with ESP IDF. So guys, before we start with the coding stuff, let's have a look on the connections or you can say the connections between your ESP32 7 segment and your touch sensor so that we can accordingly write up the code so that to have a better functionality which we want to achieve in our today's session. So this is uh, the circuit diagram which you can see on your screen and also you can see the seven segment pinouts as well so that you won't face difficulties in understanding like what exactly we have done and how we have made the connections and uh, uh, these are the pinouts like uh, how we have connected them uh, to the ESP32 and in our today's case I am using the common anode uh, seven segment display so that I can display the code accordingly. So that is the reason what I have done is I have simply given uh, a, like a resistor uh, in between and accordingly I have made a connection of that resistor from 3.3 volt to the common anode or let's say the common pin of your seven segment and rest of the pins are like A, B, C, D, E, F, G and I have used them to connect to the ESP32. So this is what exactly I have done and I hope now it is uh, clear to you right so uh, as you have understood like how the connections are now we can jump further to make the coding stuff all right so this is the code from a previous video where we have already seen that how we were controlling the LED with respect to the touch sensor it was like uh, we touched the uh, touch sensor and the LED was getting on and when we removed the hand the LED was getting off right so this is how it was happening but this time we have to uh, level up uh, in which what we are exactly doing is whenever we will touch the touch sensor it is going to increase the value or let's say it is going to uh, change the number on the seven segment for example the number is zero then the number should be changed to one then two then three and so on so in this way this is uh, gonna be right and as you have already seen in the circuit diagram that we have actually connected the touch sensor to the pin number 23 but as you can see in the current code the touch sensor is connected to pin number 22 so we have to make those changes and apart from that we have rest of the pins like from A to G so all those pins will be connected on the ESP32 just the way I have already shown you right so to write up the code I have already written the code for you so I will simply uh, type it up right all right so you can see like I have the code on your screen right so let me explain you what exactly I have done over here right so I just wanted to make it uh, a bit more dynamic so that's the reason what I have done is instead of uh, 
setting up the directions or you can say setting up the mode of each of your pin one by one i have simply used a loop and in this i have simply set up like uh, i am using a pin number but where is that pin number that pin number is inside this constant integer uh, array type like in which i have all the pins set up right so it's like the pin number which i have specified over here is with respect to like a b c d E F G. So in this way, I have set up the uh, pin numbers. So the pin numbers are like 22, 21, 19, 18, 5, 4, and 2. So in this way, I have uh, got that right. So this is the way how uh, I have done it. And in the next line, if you will notice that I have one more variable with the name numbers, and that is kind of a two dimensional array for us right and in this what exactly i have is i have the values of your uh, number right basically uh, we are going to use a seven segment display and in seven segment as you know like the pins or let's say the leds are going to be controlled with respect to this a b c d e f and g right so in this way i have to control that and for that i have to pass these values with respect to each of the number so this first value is for zero second one is for one then 2, then 3, then 4, 5 and so on up to 9, right? So this is how we have it. And just because we are using a common anode uh, type of 7 segment display, that is the reason in this case, if I am putting up 0, that means that LED will be high in that case. So 1 means low and 0 means high. So that is the reason this is how it is going to work, right? So this is the numberings for that. And accordingly, I have initialized the counter, which is starting with a value of 0. And now I have jumped to the main function, which is app main. And inside this, just like I already told you, I don't want to set up the mode one by one. So that's the reason I have used GPIO set direction uh, inside a loop inside a loop with respect to this uh, numbering from 0 to 6 right so that these pins will be specified as the input pins right so this is uh, sorry not the pin, input pins uh, specified as the output pins right so this is uh, what exactly i have done and uh, now the next thing is that uh, gpio set direction so here i have one touch sensor which is one input device for us so that is specified on the pin number 23 as i already mentioned right so this is how i have done it so this is the way how i have done it now after that we have to start up a loop so that whenever we'll touch the sensor it should uh, increase the values accordingly but one more thing is there that uh, if i want to increase the value if the starting number is zero i'm starting from zero zero one two three four up to nine after nine i don't have a second digit with me so that i can display that data so in that case, what I have to do right now is that if I will reach the number as 9, in that case, after reaching 9, it should automatically change the value. It should automatically change the value from 9 to 0. So in this way, it should work, right? So that is the logic that I have written over here so that uh, whenever I'll touch the sensor, it will simply increment the value and increment the value according to this. If the counter value is less than 9, it should increment it. If the counter value is reached to 9 or greater than 9, in that case, it should automatically uh, like start from the beginning. Start from the beginning means counter equal to 0. So this is how I'm doing it. And accordingly, whatever updated value of count I have, I have simply specified here so that I can accordingly specify them to the pin numbers, right? So these are the pins and these are the values that I'm getting from this data, right? So this is the way how I have simply uh, done this, right? And one more thing, I am adding up a small delay in here and that small delay is like 300 milliseconds. Uh, and uh, why I want this is because uh, I want whenever I'll touch the touch sensor, uh, there should be a delay in between. If I don't have the delay, so what will happen is when you will touch the touch sensor, it will be like uh, incrementing the value very fast. So I don't want that to happen because I want to visualize it properly. So that's the reason I'm putting up a delay. And uh, that is the thing that I've done over here. So with this, we will be able to visualize the data properly, right? So this is uh, what exactly we have done. And uh, I hope you have understood the code. Now the next step is that we have to simply upload the code. And you guys already know like how to upload the code if you have already watched my previous video. But yeah, if you haven't watched that video, then it's also fine, no problem. I'll show you like how we have to do that. So just go to the terminal, go to the new terminal. 
over here you can see it is uh, starting right all right so you can see everything is fine so firstly what i can do is i can simply uh, build my code right so i'm already on to this location right okay i'm not on the right location first of all i have to go inside this so before going to this let me switch to the internal directory now just type idf.py and build right just press enter so that we can simply check that uh, whether our code is having any issues or it's fine so as you can see this build command uh, didn't give us any error and it's simply asking us that uh, uh, project build complete to flash run this basically it is asking us to upload the code now right and to upload the code what exactly we have to do is we simply have to connect our esp32 to the system uh, with the complete circuit right so i'm connecting it so you can see i have connected this and it is asking me to allow it so i'll allow this now over here uh, like last time i showed you one thing that if in case you don't know like uh, uh, how do you have to flash it right because if you're using a window system in that case it's really easy for you to figure out like what port you are using but let's say if you want to specify the port number because sometimes what happens is we have multiple ports and all the ports are occupied and uh, we have an issue like uh, to figure out like what port we have to use and what port is connected to the ESP32 right so we have to see that and to do that let me give you the way like how you can find that out right because currently I'm assuming that I don't know like which port I am using right so let me show you how to do that so just simply do it like ls slash dev slash and just put a star that's it because i know that the port number is going to sp uh, start like this and this is kind of a directory or kind of a location on the macbook or the linux system so you can uh, check it this way so i'll simply run it now now you can see that there are so many ports it is showing over here but all the ports are not of use for us right and one more thing you can see over here like this is the port which i may have used in one of my previous video but how do i confirm that this is the one which i have to use so to do that what i can do is i can simply remove the esp32 connected to my system and uh, i've already removed that now i'm running it again now let's check do we have that port now can you see that port is no more right it's not there right so that means that was the port which we have to use so i'll connect the esp32 again just allow it again check it see this is the one right so now i can simply copy this because this is my port number now you know how to do this you have to flash it so i'll simply type it like idf.py and if you want to monitor that you can also set the monitor thing over here but in our case we don't have anything to display on the serial monitor so it's completely optional if you want to put it then it's okay if you don't want to put it then it's also okay right so if this is the one right so yeah this is the complete command idf.py flash hyphen p this port number which we have uh, got from here right and uh, hyphen b and the baud rate 115200 if you want to specify some different baud rate you can specify that either and the monitor just to have the serial monitor opened after uploading right so this is what we are doing now i'll simply press enter or return and we'll wait for it to flash the program All right, guys, so you can see the code is uploaded successfully. Now, the next thing for us is that we have to check that whether uh, this code that we have uploaded in our ESP32 that's working for us or not. So let's check the working of it, right? All right, guys, so you can see this is our circuit where you can see by default, the counter value is zero on the seven segment and we have a touch sensor and we have the ESP32, right? So now let me touch it so that I can show you like whether it's uh, working or not, right? So I'll touch the touch sensor. So you can see when I touch it, the value is changed to one. I touch it again, the value changed to two. I touch it again, value changed to three. Touch it again, four. 5, 6, 
seven, eight, nine, and after nine, you can see the value is automatically changed back to zero. So this is the way like how we can actually change the value and we can see like how it's working. All right, guys, so that's all from my side for today, where I've already shown you that how do we use the touch sensor ESP32 in the seven segment to create a counter on every touch, right? So that's all from my side for today. If you guys have any doubts in any of the topic which I've covered today, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section. And also, if you have liked this video, do click on the like button. And if you are new to our channel, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do click on the subscribe button so that you do not miss any videos from our channel. Also, you can uh, share this video with everyone if you want others to get the benefits of this. So that's all from my side for today. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and take care.